Okay, uh, we are located in Stay Falls, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, this is at Stay Falls Lake and uh, the former Stave River, uh, which was named by the Hudson Bay Company in the 1700s because of the uh, useful timbers on each side of the river that were used to make staves to make barrels to pickle and preserve the fish that most of which I believe were sent to Hawaii because the uh, Hawaiian people uh, love the lomi lomi salmon and uh, this place was abundant with salmon at that time. Uh, since they built the falls though there are no salmon in the actual stave lake uh, apparently they have no way of getting up there, I believe. So that wasn't uh, taking or taken into contingency when they uh, built this. But behind me is the old uh, dynamite shed and it's uh, made of heavily reinforced concrete. It was built in the year 1900. Uh, it used to be the store of the dynamite for all the activities in this area, uh, the building of the dam, etc. So again, my uh, grandfather built the dam, controlled the dam, ran the dam, and the train between here and uh, Mission back in the early 1900s. Uh, so I'm sure he spent some time or went in and out of this shed many times. Uh, it's several feet of concrete on each side. It is now completely covered in invasive ivy, uh, the old English ivy that uh, someone probably planted here. My parents used to live here. They may have planted it or my grandparents used to live here. They may have planted it. Uh, my mother was born here in State Falls. Anyway, uh, it, you can't actually see the concrete anymore. Uh, the door is open and uh, if Last time I was here I could see in the door and see the shells where the dynamite was stored. But at the present time it's completely covered in invasive ivy and you can't see it. So anyway, today's lecture is on COVID-19 and uh, why it is against natural herd immunity. Uh, it is against wanting natural herd immunity, let's say, over vaccination herd immunity. So I'm going to go over the points why natural herd immunity is not a great idea. Now when people get infected with COVID-19, the complication rate and incidence of post-COVID-19 uh, signs and symptoms and sequelae is approximately 97 percent and this includes multi-system problems in basically every system you can imagine or detail or study. Uh, I'll start with the immunological because uh, the COVID-19 affects the T-cells and there's a suppression of T-cell activity in patients and T-cell numbers in patients uh, which can last for many months and sometimes even permanently. Now it's possible a person may not notice this as an increase in infections, increase in cancer rate, etc. But only on uh, immunological testing would that be evident. Uh, the next category is neurological. This is a big one. Um, more than half of the patients uh, tested have hypoosmia or anosmia. And this again is a neurological uh, manifestation of infection or inflammation of the olfactory nerve, which runs directly to the olfactory bulb, which is an extension of the brain. So if it's invading this olfactory bulb and causing anosmia or hypoosmia, then obviously it is affecting 
the brain and perhaps even at deeper levels than the olfactory nerve. And this is one of the uh, warning signs for, for mean, which is mass epidemic encephalopathic nightmare, which I named in uh, March of 2020 after I saw what was happening after the COVID-19 pandemic and with the uh, mass of hysteria, looting, rioting, violence, increase in murders, gunshot wounds, uh, destroying civilization by a large number of uh, people, approximately 15% uh, are noted to have this uh, syndrome. And again, I believe I first reported this and named it on March 10th of 2020. And it was published in JAMA, uh, several other journals, it was published on ResearchGate and in academia.edu, if you want to look it up. Uh, the next big complication is respiratory. And a high percentage of patients are ending up with fibrosis. Uh, it may not be evident in symptoms, but on a CT scan of the chest, first it starts with the, quote, ground glass appearance on a CT scan, which indicates that there is some kind of inflammation going on. Later on, CTs show actual fibrosis or consolidation of uh, healing tissue and collagen uh, being formed and laid down inside the lungs and inside the alveoli and uh, inside the alveolar septum. Uh, this is not good because it reduces the compliance of the lung, it reduces gas exchange and uh, reduces uh, ultimately oxygen. Uh, levels. Again, uh, the people may not have symptoms of this, but when a large series of patients had a CT scan, it showed up on the CT scan, even though the patients had mild COVID-19 or even some with asymptomatic COVID-19. Uh, but hematological evidence of the infection, that is immune response to the infection, uh, proving that they had the infection. Another big area is uh, renal complications with uh, injuring of the kidneys and subsequent decrease in renal function, which if continued over time obviously could be a big problem. Now, studies have shown that at least 75% of patients who had COVID-19 at six months time have fatigue, muscle weakness, anxiety, depression, insomnia. And these are significant of both generalized post COVID-19 symptoms and more specific neurological and metabolic and immunological post COVID-19 symptoms. So that's a significant percentage, three quarters of patients at six months. So this is termed chronic because it's over three months by definition, chronic. And uh, a lot of these symptoms are evident at even six months. Now we haven't gone that long into uh, this pandemic to know uh, long-term complications after years of infection. Uh, but we will be gathering evidence uh, over these years. Okay, the next uh, problem with uh, natural herd immunity is that the virus may be oncogenic. And there are many viruses that are oncogenic, that is they lead to or associate with cancer or actually directly known to cause cancer by, by scientific proof. Uh, just to uh, repeat some of these types of cancers and the viruses that cause them is the uh, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus that causes AIDS, acquired immune dysfunction syndrome, immune deficiency syndrome, and uh, these viruses such as HTLV1, etc. 
are um, known to be associated with Carposi sarcoma. Like I, like most of the patients I've seen with Carposi sarcoma did actually have uh, AIDS, so I would agree with that that it's uh, highly associated with it, if not the actual cause. Uh, many of the other patients have lymphoma, cervical cancer has been associated with it, and sarcoma. Now this affects the T cells, and guess what? COVID-19, the coronavirus from the year identified in the year 2019, also has a major effect on the T cells, and it causes T cell dysfunction, that is abnormal function of the T cells, and it also uh, can decrease their number. So this alone could be a contributing factor to the development of cancer. Now the next one is Epstein-Barr virus and the association with Burkitt's lymphoma and leukemia. And again, this affecting the uh, T cells, as does the virus that causes COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2. Okay, the hepatitis viruses, hepatitis B and C, are associated with cancer, with hepatoma. Uh, human papilloma virus is associated with cancer of the cervix and ovaries, as well as penis, vulva, anus, tonsils, and tongue. So that's, those are strong associations. Uh, there are vaccinations uh, for those uh, the, because the association is so strong as evidence of actual proof. Uh, again, immune C T cell suppression, which is caused by COVID-19, uh, can lead to an increase of all cancers. So not only uh, the ones we've been talking about, uh, but just by suppressing the immune system, the suppressing the T cells, which are part of the immune system, with uh, associated with cell-mediated immunity, and they can also suppress the cancer surveillance system, which is keeping a check on newly developed cancer cells. And uh, so, by this method, COVID-19 could be instigating or causing or at least associated uh, with an increased rate of uh, cancer in those patients who have had an infection with it. Uh, the other thing is that COVID-19 directly could be uh, a carcinogenic agent. That is, it can possibly directly influence the DNA and uh, cause change in genes or production of uh, cancer in genes. So that's another uh, possibility and that associated with and added to the immune suppression, the T cell dysfunction, the suppression of the cancer surveillance system uh, can also be another uh, association or even cause of cancer. Okay, so those are my points that show that it is better to get the vaccination and get vaccination, herd immunity, uh, which would decrease all of those chances of all of those syndromes, signs, symptoms, complications that I spoke of that result from herd immunity from actually getting the COVID-19 infection. So again, here I am, uh, this is State Falls. This is the old dynamite shed that was used con to construct the large dam here that created Stave Lake out of this Stave River. And this uh, concrete shed, which is the walls are several feet thick, used to be full of dynamite and uh, obviously very dangerous, highly explosive. Hopefully there's none of it left. <laughs> Anyway, uh, or I wouldn't be sitting here, uh, but it is now a uh, archaeological, archaic site, uh, fenced in and covered in ivy, so we can't even see it. All we see 
is the English ivy, which, by the way, is an invasive species. Uh, but I imagine it was probably planted by people who lived here. There were houses here. There was a village, Stay Falls, it was called. Uh, before it became a park, the houses were moved. And it could be that my relatives, my distant relatives, my grandparents included, could have actually planted some of this uh, English ivy. Uh, my grandmother was from England, my grandfather was from Scotland, so they may have brought some of this ivy with them. So even though it's invasive, I uh, have an attachment to it <laughs> to some degree. Uh, so thank you. I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, COVID discussion on herd immunity and the points against it versus vaccination immunity. Final conclusion, everyone should get their vaccination as long as there's no contraindications, not allergic to it, etc. Uh, because that is a much better way of developing herd immunity through vaccination avoid all the complications of natural herd immunity from the infection, which is some of the points that I've been going through. So includes immunological, respiratory, cancer, etc. Thank you, uh, signing out from uh, State, Falls, State Falls, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, have a good day, have a good life.